In this lesson, our focus will be on discussing the applications of shock expansion theory. This theory gives us the required tools to estimate the flow properties around objects in supersonic flow containing shocks and expansion waves. As we will see shortly, it is also possible to analyze flows that contain a combination of these phenomena. In this lesson, we will be applying the shock expansion theory to analyze three classic supersonic flow problems. The diamond-shaped airfoil, the finite flat plate, and the curved symmetric airfoil. Let's first look at the diamond-shaped airfoil in a supersonic flow at a zero degree angle of attack. Looking at this figure, it is obvious why this structure is referred to as the diamond-shaped airfoil. Let us consider the deflection angle to be zeta with respect to the incoming supersonic flow. A weak shock solution, which is the most common natural solution, is also assumed. Let's analyze the behavior of the flow around the airfoil. As the supersonic flow is turned around the concave leading edge of the airfoil, an oblique shock wave is formed. Because of the weak shock solution assumption, the flow behind the shock is still supersonic. However, because of the compression through the shock wave, there is a strong increase in pressure, temperature, and density of the fluid. At the mid chord point, where the flow is turned away from the bulk fluid, an expansion fan is generated. The flow expands through the expansion fan, also accelerating in the process. At the trailing edge of the airfoil, the flow is once again turned to be parallel to the free stream direction. This results in formation of an oblique shockwave through which the flow is recompressed back to nearly free stream value. The variation of pressure in these different regions is shown in this illustration. Since P2 is greater than P3, a net drag force will act on the airfoil, which can be estimated using the following equation. This drag is due to the pressure changes created by the presence of shock and expansion waves, and is therefore referred to as the supersonic wave drag. We know that for idealized inviscid incompressible flows, there cannot be any drag because of the absence of viscosity. However, wave drag exists even in an idealized inviscid compressible fluid. Now that we understand the fluid flow behavior over a supersonic Damon airfoil, let's see how we can calculate lift and drag for this airfoil. We will do this through an example in which we will assume that the supersonic free stream Mach number is 2 and the deflection angle is 5 degrees. Before we calculate lift and drag, we need to estimate the pressure and Mach numbers in the different regions. Region 2 is behind the oblique shock wave. Since we know that Mach 1 is equal to 2 and theta is equal to 5, using the theta beta Mach number curve, we can estimate the weak shock angle beta to be 0.599 radians or approximately 34.3 degrees. From the oblique shock relation, we can calculate the Mach number after the shock to be about 1.82. We can calculate the pressure ratio across the oblique shock wave to be about 1.32. Since region 3 is behind an expansion wave, we can use the Pranmeier function 
to calculate the Mach number after the expansion wave to be 2.185 and the pressure ratio from the isentropic relations to be equal to 0.57. We already defined drag as shown here and the drag coefficient can be calculated using the following relationship. Plugging in the appropriate numbers, we obtain a drag coefficient of 0.0177. The lift force is zero because there is no net force acting in the flow normal direction. Let's now look at another example, a supersonic flow over a flat plate airfoil at a specified angle of attack. Like the diamond airfoil, the flow compresses and expands as it traverses around the flat plate airfoil. Here is an illustration of the shock and expansion wave formation at the leading edge and trailing edges of the airfoil. If we assume an angle of attack alpha, the lift and drag forces can be calculated using the following expression. If the free stream Mach number is 2, and the angle of attack is 2 degrees. We can follow the same process as we did for the diamond shaped airfoil and obtain the Mach numbers and pressure ratios in the different regions as shown here. Using these, the lift and drag coefficients can be calculated as shown. Let us now quickly look at the third example, the supersonic flow over a curved symmetric airfoil. From this illustration, we can see that the leading edge and the trailing edge are sharp. As a result, we will have attached oblique shock waves at both these locations. However, because of the curved shape, the expansion waves exist throughout the surface of the airfoil. This means that the flow expands continuously starting right after the leading edge and up to the trailing edge. This is illustrated by the pressure distribution in the different regions near the airfoil. So far, we use the shock expansion theory for estimating lift and drag forces. For slender objects at small angles of attack, a simplified but accurate approximation called the thin airfoil theory can be used to derive simple analytical expressions for the wave, lift and drag forces. Let's explore it. Recall the relation for the pressure ratio across an oblique shock wave and let's consider a supersonic flow over an airfoil. If the airfoil is thin and at a small angle of attack, then the shock expansion theory can be simplified with the weak oblique shock approximation. The pressure ratio relation can be rewritten as shown here. The pressure coefficient is also given here. This is the basic relation of the thin airfoil theory, stating that the pressure coefficient is proportional to the local flow deflection. If we apply this thin airfoil theory to a flat plate at an angle of attack, the pressure coefficient on the upper and lower surfaces of the flat plate is given by the following equation. Subsequently, the lift and drag coefficient can be calculated using the formula shown here. Note that we are assuming the angle of attack to be small enough such that cosine of alpha is equal to 1 and sine of alpha is equal to alpha. Recall that we calculated the CL and CD for a flat plate at an angle of attack of 2 degrees in a supersonic flow at Mach equal to 2 as 0.08065 and 0.00282 respectively. For the same operating conditions using the thin airfoil theory we obtain a CL of 0 0.08 061 and a CD of 0.00281. This indicates that even though approximate the thin airfoil theory can give almost identical predictions under the appropriate conditions, 
as the exact shock expansion theory. A similar result can be obtained for the diamond airfoil, which I will leave for you to figure it out. The thin airfoil theory can be extended to an arbitrary airfoil shape. Let us consider an airfoil whose upper and lower surfaces are defined as functions of X. Using the thickness distribution and the camber line, the surface profiles can be written as shown here. Using the thin airfoil theory, the CP on each of these surfaces is given by the following relations. From this, we can calculate the lift and drag forces using these relations. Using average values of thickness and angle of attack, these equations can be rewritten to the following form. As you can see, the lift depends only on the angle of attack, while the drag is influenced also by the shape of the airfoil. That brings us to the end of this lesson.